the strength and then delivered messages to Nigerians and gave hope to all. And in all these places he visited, in all the states, and not just the tumultuous crowd, but not just the excitement of the crowd, but the fact that it raised the hopes of the people and it showed clearly that it was the president, uh, not for the elite, but for the common people, and that Nigerians see repose a lot of hope in him. And we, as party stalwarts, were very, very impressed uh, with not just with what we saw. It was quite impressive, and uh, the APC is waxing stronger and stronger. I, I also noticed the fact that in 2015, the APC as a party was almost non-existent in uh, places like uh, the South-South, except in Edo State, and in the South is except in uh, Emo State, but today the case is different. Uh, the party has permeated and penetrated uh, the Southeast and the South South uh, states of the Federation uh, in more numbers than people can imagine. And I think these things will come out uh, in a free and fair election when, when the uh, real presidential elections are, are held. Yes, yeah, thank you, Your Excellency. I will, I know you will want to my question, my colleagues to ask some of the questions. Uh, okay. Adam? Uh, we heard the chairman of the party uh, claim that there are officials violent working in Kabul with uh, the PDC. So what, are you aware of it? Are you thinking of taking measures to check that? Well, to, to be honest, you know, INEG is an independent uh, uh, body, but we are, some of the officials are not totally independent. In some states of the Federation, uh, we have noticed uh, uh, unholy alliances with the, uh, with the uh, uh, governments in, uh, in, in power. Uh, if, uh, for instance, in a, in a place like Akwaibom, where I come from, the body language of INEC in Akwaibom said clearly shows that they will not be able to conduct free and fair elections, and then they will not be able to give all the political parties, particularly the APC level playing field and then you can you can you can at least you can take, get this this can be it's very easy for you to see this from the body language and from the nature of uh, uh, people that are uh, you know procured to run their affairs uh, the ad hoc staff and the and the other uh, support staff of the INA for the elections and uh, the pronouncements the gesticulations the body language even the the kind of uh, things that are being told to, to trainees uh, by the IMEX staff. So quite worrisome that, yes, indeed, what the national chairman observed, that there was uh, a lot of uh, unholy alliance uh, between uh, certain uh, INEC officials, uh, in this year, certain INEC commissioners and the opposition against the APC uh, do exist. I, I believe strongly that uh, uh, that remains the case. Sir, can I know you have done rigorous campaign in uh, Akwaibo. Yes. But there are still reservations about the ABC taking Akwaibo State. How confident are you? Well, ABC has no intention of taking Akwaibo. The only intention of APC is uh, to reflect the will of the people of Akwaibo State, which today remains 80 to 90 percent APC. My people are, are quite determined to join the center politics of Nigeria. And they, are, they, are, and they have uh, been, you know, some of them who are politicians have been decamping de in droves. And those who are not politicians are declaring their support for the APC on a daily basis. A very good example was when the president flagged off his campaigns in Akwaibo said. Uh, it was unprecedented. You had thousands and thousands of people inside and outside the massive stadium in Akwaibo said and on the streets of the state. And, we have gone out uh, through the 31 local governments of Akwaibo said, and I can tell you, amazingly, they enjoy all the way, with thousands of people coming out with a lot of excitement and all that. And the indices of winning election are very clear. When the people are with you, you win election. When the people are not with you, you don't win, you don't win election. election. It's not, it's not a higher crowd. So if, they, uh, if, if people say that they have doubt about the APC, uh, Akwaibo becoming part of the APC states in Nigeria, I can tell you that Akwaibo is already an APC state. It's already an APC state, just waiting for election to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm very confident about that. Well, I'll please just take a few questions. Yes. Uh, 
Well, I, 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 I'm not cutting you short. I don't read fake uh, fake news. So I, 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 I saw it, but because it was a fake letter, okay. I did not need to read the contents. I did not. And if you uh, a cursory look at that letter, will show you that, uh, one, I went to a very good school. I speak good English. Uh, the letter did not contain good English. And then secondly, you, I am a lawyer of 32 years. I will not write a letter and say yours sincerely. And also superpose yours faithfully, with the, you know, uh, with, a, with a scan signature. So even merely looking at that letter, you could see the fakeness of that letter. So, and then I didn't need to read the content because I don't communicate with the chief of staff. That letter was addressed to the chief of staff. I've never communicated uh, with the chief of staff. I don't report to the chief of staff. I'm only a senator, and I've never written one letter to Mr. President since I joined uh, the party. And don't forget that I, I'm, I'm also a member of the APC. APC the can write a letter to the president, but not me as an individual. That letter no, was not only fake, it was a figment of imagination of the writers. And it's all part of this campaign of calumny. And you need to know something. There are two things happening in my state. One, fake news, a lot of fake news coming out from the opposition, in this case the PDP. And the second one is a massive deployment of funds, cash, you know, to buy people and all that. And yeah, I used to read books in those days when I was younger in Ferragamon College. And then uh, particularly James Adley Chase, there was a book called Poke to Holo. And it started by saying that, uh, that fear is the key that opens the wallet of the rich. I shared it, they were saying there was no money. There was no money to do a project. There's nothing on ground in my state. There's no money. They've not been able to commission a single project. All the big men that come to my state, they only take them to churches to pray. Like when the President of and came, they took him to church to pray. But they, they go to other states and they go and commission projects. But it might say nothing to commission. And so now that my people are glamouring for change, what has happened now is that money is flowing all over the state. And so I know that the pocket of the rich is not really open with fear. And that is what is happening with the pocket of the opposition government in the state. So <laughs> I have no time for fake letters. <laughs> Uh, Support on the ground, yes. No, 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 no. I said the national chairman, okay. um, you know, alluded to the fact, you know, in his statement. That was what was he said. He said, he asked me if I could concur, and I said, yes, that I concur. That even from the body language, that yes, indeed, that we can see an unholy alliance, and there is need for us to check it to ensure free and fair elections. Okay, so that my, my question to you, Claire, concerning those two points is, what's fueling your confidence of being in a state where you question the credibility of... You can only rig election in a place you are popular. Today, the APC is all over our quiet on set. 80 to 90 percent of the people are, are APC. So when you go to rig election and you don't succeed, you bring anarchy. And so with you as president, the third, uh, uh, the fourth estate of the realm, your job is to make sure that you call on those authorities conducting elections across Nigeria, not to cause anarchy in the country, by trying to go and rig in a government, or rig a, a government that is not popular to continue in office, and in the process cause anarchy in the country. That my confidence is fueled by my people, the support of my people. Like, and, and if you're a politician, you know when your people are supporting you. And I keep saying, for some of you may want to aspire, if you become a leader and you are running on a track, you must once in a while look back to know whether the footsteps you are hearing are running behind you or they are running away from you. Because footsteps are footsteps. In my own case as a leader, I normally look back and I notice that the footsteps are following me. And not just following me, they are increasing in their numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why is your party going on campaign? Why is your party going on campaign? Thank you. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for this opportunity. 
I leave your microphone before I mention anything about welfare. <laughs> 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 you, you, you'll come here on our website. Uh, let me explain to Of course, I believe Nigerians can, can compare apple, uh, you know, when they see apple and orange. The reality is that this president has done very well, considering the fact that he was able to take Nigeria out of recession. He made ongoing projects on the ground. He has completed them, such as the ones in the airports, such as the railway lines. He has gone into a lot of massive infrastructure never seen before. I'm a, a governor. I was a governor who believed strongly in transformation. I still do believe in transformation. And I know that I was always very sad when federal budgets contain 78%, sometimes 80% recurrent expenses. And what is left for, for capital expenses will be 16% or 18%. But this president has been able to plug the loopholes of leakages in the system and free more money for developmental purposes. The TSA, the single currency account, is a major innovation that I can tell you. Some, some ministries were operating up to 50 accounts, 70 accounts. Places like NMBC had over 500 accounts. But today we are able to mop up all those funds into one single account, and then he has brought out a budget that has freed over 30% now for capital projects across the country. And those things are happening. And then there is no way you can put something on nothing and expect it to stand. Nigerians are glamouring for infrastructural change. They are glamouring for better health care. They are glamouring for better educational facilities and all that. Those things cannot happen. When you spend almost 80% of your resources on recurring expenses, pensions, salaries, salaries, and all that, allowances. So we must commend the president. And of course, you took a look at what is happening with the, with the legacy, but you will, be, you will be very impressed. Take a look at what is happening with Abuja, uh, Kaduna, going towards the north now. You can even go with train from here. You know, so a lot, of, a, a lot of these things are happening across the country. Look at the power sector. It has improved from 2.4 uh, megawatts right now to about 7,000. Uh, 7, so I, 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 I believe in science and wonder. So many things are very visible. Uh, the enabling environment is there in terms of law and order. And then, of course, the fight against corruption has not only been intensified, but I think it has now become a major deterrent to any public official that, yes, there could be a day of reckoning if you should go out of your way uh, to, instead of moving your state or your country forward, you attempt to move your pocket forward. And I think these are things that Nigeria needed to be able to become a nation and then bond it, uh, you know, and then create a future for Nigeria. So these are the things that convince me that, yes, indeed, the president will definitely have a second opportunity to finish his state tenure. And I don't see what the opposition will bring. As I speak with you now, uh, we in the Niger Delta are very apprehensive. I don't think there's any person from the South-South that will go and vote for the, for the PDP, even though some of them are trying to purchase votes. Because when you look at the major policy document of the, of the PDP today, they are talking about selling uh, the uh, NMPC. NMPC, what does the NMPC have? Is it the building? What NMPC controls are the oil of the Niger Delta. Those are the things they control, the oil wells, the oil fields, and all that. And those things come together with land. I don't see anybody from the South South or any Niger Delta who will agree that the same we sold out Nigerian Airways and we, we became a laughing stock in the community of states in, the, in Africa, where you look at Kenya Airways coming here, Ethiopian Airlines, Ghana Airlines, and Nigeria has no single plane now. Call it so. And then so we sold out the aluminum smelter company in Ikarabasi that provided thousands of jobs. And today that place is totally dead, down there. 
with over 690 megawatts of electricity. There. Nothing is happening there. We sold out of Kwibuku, Paper Mill in Akwaibumana. People are dead, jobless, and that massive structure is there wasted. So all those things combined are things that frighten us. When somebody is talking about going to sell NMPC, the sale of NMPC on its own simply means that the Niger Deltans are going to be divested of not just their properties, not just the water that they fish on, but the fact that they will lose even, they will become tenants in their land for the next 50 to 100 years. And people will come from outside, maybe friends of the government or friends of wherever, to come and possess their lands and all that. So the election also is between integrity. The president has shown that, yes, indeed, he can give back what belongs to Niger Delta to Niger Delta. He's even paying back monies that were used, even under my channel, to do federal roads. He's refunding those things. And what we used to call party club, we tried everything under the PDP. We never had those monies. He has paid back those monies. And I was a governor. The federal government was owing me over 145 billion on federal roads and the building of a prison and all sort of things. I had to intervene. I, I, I dualized federal roads. I did a lot. I built the airport, everything. But at the end, today, the, uh, this government is refunding those monies to the states and all that. So if you see a government that has shown sincerity, it simply means that you are now talking about a question of integrity and a question of, uh, you know, postulation. We are postulating that you bring in a government that will sell your father's land and sell your oil well and sell the waters that you use in fishing. My brother and sisters, there is no option to President Buhari. Thank you.